a different mic. Everybody hear me okay? Hi, I'm Erin. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. I am a yoga teacher, and before I owned a yoga studio, I was a school librarian, and I loved to tell stories. I think it's ingrained in humans to tell stories, to share stories, to listen to stories. Since the dawn of time, man has looked up and around and asked why, how, who, and what. So I want to share an old traditional creation story. So what the program says I'm going to tell, I decided not to. <laughs> I have, I'm in charge of the mic. It, I, can, I can change my mind. So this story is a creation myth, and versions of this story are found all over the world. There's a Native American story. There's one from East India. There's one from South Africa. The version I'm going to tell is Scandinavian. In a time before time, the world was a wretched, wretched place. There were no stories. There was no laughter. There were no colors. No music, no dancing, no poetry. It was not a great place to be. But way above the earth, there were two siblings, the sun and his younger sister, the moon. And they were best friends as well as siblings. And they had had amazing adventures all over the universe. The only corner of the cosmos they had not visited. You guessed it, Earth. Because why would you? It was so dark and cold, boring. But one day they grew so bored. The moon said, why not? Let's give it a chance. So Sun leaned down and said, Hello, could someone please throw us a line? And someone did. A spider heard them, and he weaved a silver thread, strong and long, and he threw it up, and Sun caught it. And Sun slid down this long, strong thread, and he arrived. And the human said, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. For they had never seen yellow or gold. There were no colors on earth. They said, you're so bright and warm. For the earth was only cold and dark. You are amazing, they said. And Sun said, take it all in. <laughs> Gave him a little razzle-dazzle. Sun liked the compliments. He made himself a little bit bigger. He shone just a little bit brighter. And that is when Sister Moon decided to join the party. Now, if the humans thought Sun was pretty cool, when they caught sight of Moon, they lost their minds. Moon didn't look the way that the moon looks now. At this time, Sister Moon shimmered and glimmered with every color of the cosmos. Red and orange, yellow and green, blue, indigo, violet, every shade in between. She was something to see magnificent. And the humans, of course, forgot all about sun and started to worship the moon. How do you think this made the sun feel? Anyone? Yeah, 
real bad. A little bit mad, a little bit left out, and a lot jealous. And the more he thought about it, the more he seethed. And the more he seethed, the more he just couldn't stand that no one was noticing his razzle-dazzle anymore. So he hatched a plan. He waited until his sister was asleep, and then he snuck into her room. And one by one, he took every one of her colors, placed it in a bag around his neck, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and every shade. And then he was gone. The next morning, Moon woke up <gasps> and went down to the river to wash her face. As she caught her reflection, she noticed something really terrifying. My colors, where are my colors? There was no shimmer, no glimmer, just pale. And she started to sob and to cry. My colors, my colors, where are my colors? And she cried and she wept and she wept all day. And she wept all the next day. And she wept for days and weeks and months. She cried so much, she flooded the riverbank. Her tears threatened to flood the entire planet. So the humans go to the sun and they say, you're going to have to do something about your sister. If she doesn't stop crying, we're all going to die. So Sun's like, okay, maybe if I go down to the riverbank, because I'm Sun, I could warm up this tear-soaked land. So he comes down to the riverbank, and his sister looks at him and notices something interesting. There's a bag around his neck that she'd never seen before. Now, show of hands, who has siblings? <laughs> I have an older brother. Keep your hand up if you've ever taken something that belonged to your sibling. Or they ever took something that belonged to you. So it didn't take her long to put it together. Sister Moons figured it out. You took my colors, she said. He's caught. She flies at her brother. They fight. They wrestle. There's yelling. There's punching. There's screaming. She has never been so mad. She reaches out. She grabs that bag around his neck. She yanks it and <gasps> kapow. Every color goes flying out as the bag explodes. Blue flies up into the sky. Blue flies down into the ocean. Green flies to the trees. Green flies across the land. Red and pink and orange fly in every direction, raining down to color all the birds in the sky, all the fish in the ocean, every animal on the land. The humans look down and they're like, look at me, I'm wearing colors. What is this? And as their eyes took them in, their hearts opened up and something amazing started to happen. They started to laugh. They started to write songs and poems and stories. They picked up instruments and started to play. They started to dance. They started to live. Now Sister Moon saw this and her heart was glad. She was willing to give up her colors to make all the humans on earth so happy. But 
She was never going to forgive her brother for doing something so terrible. So when sun flew to the top of the universe, moon flew all the way to the bottom. And we now get to share stories. But to this day, you will never see Brother Sun and Sister Moon in the same sky.